Hi folks, Lee Diffie with you here with CEO of McLaren Racing, Zach Brown, and we're sitting here in this beautiful setting. Uh, Zach has a vintage uh, Ford Condor 1972 motorhome that was used by McLaren in the 70s and 80s. Zach, uh, Saturday at Long Beach doesn't get any better, the sun's shining. Before we get to F1 and IndyCar, let's talk Long Beach. You're a Southern California boy. When did you first come here? What does this event mean to you? Um, I mean, this was, this was where it all started for me. Uh, my first race was 1981, the Long Beach Grand Prix. I uh, came with my mom, my dad, my brother. Uh, I remember it like it was yesterday. Uh, Alan Jones won. Uh, I remember the sound, the speed, and I remember going into the aquarium. All the Formula One cars were in there, so that was the paddock back then, and there was these white picket fences. You could just walk up, and I mean, you could literally touch the cars. Um, and what was cool is Monster OJ, one of the uh, owners who just passed away from McLaren, was one of the big sponsors of Alan Jones and, and Williams then. So uh, uh, that was the start of it, 1981. And then the race that got me into racing um, was 1987 uh, when I came and Mario put it on pole and won. And uh, that's what got me into, into kart racing. I've raced here a couple times. And so for me, this is a Home race in Long Beach was always kind of the second biggest race on the IndyCar schedule behind uh, Indianapolis. So uh, a lot of special memories here. Beautiful points of connectivity there. All right, so let's let's bring it to 2021 in the last couple of weeks uh, with you at the helm and, and all of the wonderful staff that you've assembled. McLaren wins its first Formula One Grand Prix in almost a decade. Goes one better with one, two, Daniel Ricciardo, Lando Norris. Um, special time at the moment. Lando put it on the pole today as well, so you're on a real roll. Yeah, we're, um, we've got to keep our feet on the ground. Um, it's a tough sport. Um, it is all coming together. We still have a long way to go, but in this kind of journey to get back to the, the front, you're going to have uh, peaks and valleys along the way, and we've had a couple peaks here. Uh, before that, we had a couple valleys. You know, in, in Holland, we were, we were nowhere, so um, it was great to see the team uh, executed with perfection that weekend we were the daniel had the best launch enabled him to get in front of max at the start uh we had the fastest pit stop of the race and it was very close the entire time uh, we led the most laps everything other than kind of the pit stop sequence uh, and then we set the fastest two laps which was the part that uh, on pit wall uh randy who's our head of strategy and andrea who's our racing director at about lap 40 they started talking about maybe we should go for fastest lap. And I was sitting there going like, dude, what are you guys doing? <laughs> Forget it. Let's just get this race over <laughs> Let's with. Let's get the victory. We've got a long way to go. We don't need to do any showing off here. But I was so impressed with the team because I was freaking out on pit wall. Try not to I just head down. But the internal feelings were the longest 53 laps of my life. But the team, it was just another race. It was, it was so great to see how prepared and, and it was just doing their thing so um, you know that's a big win for for the team the men and women at McLaren our, our fans our sponsor partners um, and I think it was great for the sport because you know McLaren's one of the uh, iconic teams that you know struggled the last decade so to see uh, um, a spike in our um, journey back to the front was was awesome I mean McLaren being McLaren and having so many years uh, of victories and podiums and championships, you know, you could be mistaken for thinking that it was almost a rite of passage for the staff. Race is finished, let's head to the podium. You have employees that have never been, you know, to, to celebrate a victory. No, we've got, we've got everything from guys and gals that have won multiple world championships to people like myself that, you know, up until a couple of years ago, had never even, you know, been to the podium, let alone uh, sprayed the the champagne, and that's why it was so good to, to, to see, you know, get rewarded, the team get rewarded for all the hard work uh, that they put in. And you're right, you know, I grew up, um, McLaren was always my favorite team, and it was kind of like, oh, they're third, that's disappointing. You know, it was kind of yeah, right. like first, second, or third, there was no fourth, fifth, or sixth in that era when it was Senna and Prost. And, Hacking in and Lewis and uh, you know I went to a lot of races with McLaren, and it was kind of like, yeah, we're gonna finish first or second today. Um, we're a long way from from getting back there, and I think the sport now is gonna be different. I'm not convinced anyone's gonna kind of dominate with under the new rules and the budget cap, which I think will be great because if we can get Formula One to be as competitive as IndyCar racing, 
where you have, what do we have, eight, nine different winners nine, this year, yeah. and who's going to win this weekend? Okay, it's starting to look like Colton's pretty switched on, but there could be 10 drivers that could win. In Formula One, I think there's three or four that could win uh, tomorrow. So uh, if we can get the excitement that Formula One has and the competitiveness on track that IndyCar has, I think Formula One's just going to do this. So coming into the 2020 season for the NTT IndyCar Series, Schmidt Peterson Motorsports became Arrow McLaren SP. What made you want to get into IndyCar? And on a full-time basis, McLaren comes in for the first time since 1979. What was the trigger? What, what, what was it your racing side of you or was it the commercial side uh, of you? Or? It, was, it, was, it, was, it was both. Um, racing side usually leads, but it needs to be backed up by the commercial uh, you know, business side. And um, you know, I've always liked teams and drivers that competed in multiple forms of, of racing. And uh, McLaren has a long history. It's won the Indy 500. It was Can Am, etc. Uh, we've won Le Mans. And uh, so when I joined, you know, first protocol was getting the Formula One team back in shape, and that um, is still a work in progress. But we're we're certainly in better shape today than we were when we when we started. And then you know, IndyCar America is super important to our fans, uh, super important to our our sponsor partners. Um, we love the race, it's, it fits our brand, and I wanted to have something that was commercially different than uh, the other Formula One teams. And while Formula One is growing rapidly in North America, it still only races two times a, a year here, Montreal three. And I wanted to kind of heavy up on North America from a commercial standpoint. So I thought, let's tack on IndyCar and into our F1 program and then we've got more North America than any other team and it's worked out great and you know we came first with Fernando in 17 then we came again in 19 uh, that didn't work too well uh, but I, I sort of learned a lot which is uh, it's good to learn from your mistakes and as I say everyone in the factory just don't make the same one twice so then we went about all right 19 that didn't quite work let's let's kind of integrate into an existing team with the view of, of making an acquisition and it's worked great and couldn't be happier and we are fully committed to uh, IndyCar and hope to have a third car out at uh, some point in the near future. So it was announced recently that McLaren Racing is upping its stake in, in ownership. So you want to continue the McLaren legacy right but you, you, you've come into an established team uh, and people at one point in time said there may have been too many cooks in the kitchen but it's worked and it's working well. You're a championship contender this week. Yeah, no, it's, uh, it's been great. I think Taylor's done a, a, an outstanding job. I think he's got a real strong future in, this, in the sport. I get along great with Sam and Rick. You know, we're all racers, we've all raced. So I think we have a common vision and, and a common desire to, to win. And I think the um, ownership gives some, some clarity um on and allows us to invest more it was kind of you know when you're renting a house you'll put some nice furniture in it but if you own the house then you're going to really decorate it and we wanted to make that type of commitment but in order to do that we um we felt we needed to have a a, a strong ownership position to make that type of uh commitment and i think it's worked out great and uh you know and then that's what's led us to extreme e it's, you know it's kind of like IndyCar uh, supports North America, you know, Extreme E is about sustainability and, and gender equality and, and our whole ESG um, agenda, which is very important to us. And so you kind of wrap that all together and we think, you know, McLaren Racing is in the business of racing. Uh, we got to win at everything that we, we do, even if we know it takes time. And then, you know, I, I think we, as McLaren Racing, we have a responsibility to uh, excite our fans, uh, be a fun place to work for our, our race team members. You'll get more out of them if they enjoy what they're, they're doing. We have an obligation to our corporate partners to build their business. And then I think we can make through our technology, McLaren being kind of an R&D lab for the world, and whether that's with our partners or countries, how can we share our technologies to make road cars safer or biometrics and in the health industry so i think beyond entertaining fans i think we can really make a, a strong contribution to the world out there and 
that's the mission McLaren's on, and it's a fun, great place to be at the moment. So it's championship weekend, and your championship contender is a 22-year-old Mexican in Pato Award. What kind of a character is he? He's, um, I've described him as he's a bit Lando and Daniel wrapped into one. Um, you know, Lando's young, Pato's young, Lando's very funny and witty, but he's, he's quite reserved and, and shy where, you know, Daniel kind of walks into the room and Daniel's in the room because he comes dancing into the room. And Pato's got that kind of real extroverted, high energy. So to me, he's a combination of Daniel and Lando and he's great to work with and he's an awesome racing driver. What about, well, speaking of that, as a racing driver, is there anybody on the racing landscape that you've witnessed over the years that Pato reminds you of? I mean, he's got those lightning fast hands. Yeah. He's aggressive. Got, like, is there somebody you who- You gotta say Montoya, you, you know. Um, Montoya was awesome to watch, right? He was sideways on the ovals and just brave as can be. Uh, Pato's a little bit of a different personality outside of the car, but I think when you put the helmet on, he reminds me of a, a young Wablo, a Juan Pablo Montoya, just kind of get out of my way, I'm coming, and I might come past you sideways. So the pressure's on, and it's, it is achievable for you to win the championship. If you do, you know, in this second year, has it come too fast? Because, you know, we were always talking with the team that yeah. the goal was to win races first, yeah. but here you are in a championship position. Has that come too quickly or it's fine with you? Uh, hey, we'll take whatever we can get. Um, you know, I hope we finish no worse than second. You know, we got to go run our own race and try and win. And, and we have, a, I would say, kind of an outside chance at the championship. Everything kind of has to fall our way and everything has to kind of not go Alex's way. And he's at a super strong season um, but then you got you know New Garden and I think even Dixon so we got to make sure we don't leave this weekend fourth in the championship because really our goal was to win more than one race we've done that and to do better than fourth in the championship so sitting here right now we've done that but we've got one race to go and we can fall to fourth so I think we got to just keep doing what we're doing and you know we can only control our race uh, if we're fortunate enough to win the championship uh, you know, this can never come too early. Do you think, we're, we're noticing a, a, an uptick in interest from Europe in IndyCar. Yeah. Do you think you guys have been partly responsible for that? I think we've contributed to that. I think uh, Grosjean's brought a lot of attention uh, to, to the sport. Um, yeah, I think with all these things, when things are, are growing, there's a lot of contributing factors. But I'd like to think the McLaren brand, just based on how much papaya I see around here and the fans coming up to me, that uh, it's noticed we're racing here now. So at the end of the year, we're in the holidays. You're in the racing off season. You're sitting back and you're relaxing. What, what's gonna be your reflection on 2021? Well, I'm not gonna have time, much time to relax because I'm gonna go to the final Extreme E race of the year, which is December 19th. So I'm working, I'm racing up until uh, Christmas. If there was a series that raced on Christmas, I'd, I'd probably go do that. Uh, the Christmas Winter Championships. Um, I don't reflect back probably as much as I should um, because I'm always yeah, looking forward. Lo looking forward, but uh, for sure, I think regardless of how we finish the F1 season and how we finish IndyCar, I think we got to look back and say we definitely, as a team, took a big step forward this year. We we won. We now got a pole, we've won a couple races here, so hopefully we'll finish strong. Um, one more to go here, and I think it's six or seven more to go in Formula One, there or thereabouts. Um, but I think we're gonna look back on this as a successful year, which is gonna make next year that much more stressful because you just keep raising the bar on ourselves. Well, Zach, thanks very much. All the best in the championship and the remainder of the F1 season. Thanks for having me on.